reason that's important, the reason I make that distinction is historically it hasn't mattered as much what year version of Excel we were using. But with Office 365, Microsoft is really changing. We've kind of reached a fork in the road. If your version of Excel has a year number in its name, that version of Excel, as you know, is frozen in time and won't get any new updates. With Office 365, Microsoft is doing something different where it gets updates as often as every month. And they've been adding little small changes to Office 365, but in the coming months, there's an overhaul to Excel's calculation engine. That means formulas are going to recalculate much faster. Also, there are new types of formulas that are referred to as dynamic arrays. Those are going to empower us to do things with our data with formulas that previously have required menu commands. So there's lots of exciting stuff on the horizon with Office 365. And so if you are using an older version of Excel and considering upgrading, Excel 2019 is already out of, it's already obsolete because it's not going to get to these new changes that I just mentioned. And so the subscription version, that's where software license, licensing is moving, where we all have to just agree to pay on an ongoing basis for software, but Microsoft is definitely giving us a lot in return in exchange for that. With regard to my materials and my teaching style, I do cover all the different versions of Excel. We'll be teaching from Office 365 today, but I will show you, and if there's any differences in an older version, I'll point out those differences. You'll see me demonstrate everything at least twice. I'll first walk you through it on the PowerPoint slides, which are very detailed and have numbered steps, and then I'll go through the the example in Excel in the Office 365 version so you can see it firsthand. So let's jump in. One of the best ways that we can save time in Excel is by using lookup functions. And a lot of us are familiar with VLOOKUP, but also I'm always surprised how many folks have not yet experienced working with VLOOKUP in Excel. The V in VLOOKUP stands for vertical, meaning we can look vertically up and down a column for a piece of data. And so for a simplified example here, we can see that if I'm looking for the value of account for 44100 for the month of March, if I was not familiar with VLOOKUP, I would create a direct reference to that number. I would go to cell B2, I'd type an equal sign, I'd manually track down column D till I found the row in question, I'd manually track across that row, and then I'd click on that cell, and that would create my formula. VLOOKUP automates that manual tracking for me and also makes my formula be dynamic. So for VLOOKUP to do what it does, it needs four different arguments. The first argument is the lookup value, and we refer to that as what to look for. So I'm looking for account 4100, so that's whatever's in cell A3. Next up, we have the table array, and that's just a fancy way of referencing the cell coordinates of our list. In this case, we can see I'm referencing cells the D1 through H5. Now you can clearly see the table extends further on beyond column H, and a lot of people will go and select the entire table even though they're only returning data from column H in this case. I'm gonna show you why I prefer not to do that. Also, the trick that I will show you gives us the answer to the third argument, which is the column index number. So VLOOKUP looks down the first column of, of, the, of our table array. When it finds a match, it tracks across that row and it needs to know which column in that row do I return data from. In this case, we're returning data from the fifth column. With VLOOKUP, we can do exact matches or approximate matches. And in my VLOOKUP courses, I go in much deeper detail on that, the difference between an exact match and an approximate match. Here, we're just going to do an exact match. You might have been taught to put the word false when you're writing VLOOKUP. A shortcut is you can put a zero instead. So zero is much easier to type out than the word false. And either zero or false both signify that we want an exact match. So to contrast VLOOKUP from our direct references, we'll pull up our example and work through that. So for our direct reference, we type an equal sign. We're looking for account 4100. We come over here, we manually track down, we find that, we manually track across, we click on that. And that's a direct reference and nothing wrong with that. They have their place in Excel, but if we're having to do that dozens or hundreds of times, very time consuming, very fraught with risk that we'll reference the wrong cell. Plus we copy and paste the report and that data has moved to a different row. Suddenly our formulas are all, all out of step. Conversely, with VLOOKUP, we can say equals VLOOKUP. First thing it needs to know is the lookup value. So that's going to be our account number here. 
Then there is a table array. So we're going to click on cell D1 here. I'm going to go down and across. And I'm going to select through column H. Now I want to draw your attention to cell I6, where it says 5R times 5C. That's where Excel is telling me at this moment I've selected five rows and five columns. Number of rows doesn't matter. VLOOKUP can look at the whole column if I want, want it to. But notice this gives me the answer to the third argument. I want to return data from the fifth column. So if I had selected all the way to the right, then I have to start all over again trying to figure out what column number to return data from. If instead, when I'm selecting, I select through what I want to return data from, because VLOOKUP wouldn't look beyond that column anyway. I put a five here, can put a zero there instead of putting the word false. And so then VLOOKUP looks up my data there. So notice here then, if I change this, if I intended to look for data from 40300, then VLOOKUP can't find, I mean, my direct reference is out of date. It's retrieving a bad value here where VLOOKUP just went further down and retrieved another value there. If VLOOKUP cannot find a match, since I looked at 4 or 500, returns pound in A, meaning not available there. So conversely here, if I put in 4 or 500, because there's a result in cell B2, I might not catch that I forgot to go back in and amend that formula and not realize that it's returning data from a previous point in that spreadsheet there. So if you're not already using lookup functions, lookup functions can really be transformational in how you craft and build spreadsheets and can give your spreadsheets much better integrity. Another function that is similar in nature to VLOOKUP but gives us some expanded capabilities is the SUMIF function. So SUMIF allows us to add up multiple values. A constraint of VLOOKUP is it can only look up a single value whereas SUMIF can add up multiple values here. So we have some sample salary data here. Let's say that we were trying to summarize these salaries by department. In a bit, we're going to see one way we could summarize the, the, this information is with a pivot table, but pivot tables don't fit every need that we have, and so sometimes we need to just manually add up those numbers there. So if we aren't aware of the SUMIF function, we might write formulas like we see in cell H2 through H5 there, where some combination of plus, plus, plus cells and maybe trying to sum different ranges there. And as soon as somebody switches departments or things shift at all, then all those formulas are suddenly out of date and we have to start all over again with rewriting them. Conversely, the SUMIF function has three arguments. First argument is the range argument. So that's where to look. Notice in this case, I've future proofed the sum if by leaving out the row numbers. So I didn't say B1 through B19, which I could have. I said B colon B. So that way I'm referencing the entire column. If I add more data, I don't have to go circle back and rewrite that formula. The criteria is our alternative to VLOOKUP or what we're looking for. So we're looking for the marketing department, Third argument is the sum range, and that that's what we want to add up. So sum if is going to look down column B. Every time it finds the word marketing in this case, it'll add up those salaries there. And if someone switches departments, the formula changes on its own. But also, I only have to write the formula one time. I can write it for the marketing department and copy it down and then be able to add up the values for the other departments as well. Unlike VLOOKUP, if sum if doesn't find a match, it returns a zero. So it's much, much tidier than VLOOKUP. We can use the if error function with VLOOKUP to, to mask that pound in A, but that, that involves having to add yet another worksheet function or a formula. Also, VLOOKUP can only find a single match where sum if allows us to return multiple matches when we're looking up numbers. So what we'll do here is I'm not going to write these formulas. I won't subject you to watching me manually try, try to piece these values together here. But this section down here, I will recreate these formulas so you can see. If we say equals sum if for our range argument, that's where to look. So I'm going to be looking at column B. So I want to look all the way up and down column B. The criteria is what am I looking for? I'm looking for whatever is in cell G9. And then there is a sum range, and that's what I want to add up. So I can click on column D here. So that is my formula there. And notice I can take that formula and copy it down. So then it automatically looks up these values here. 
Now, I just did a move that's so second nature, I often don't even think, don't even realize that I've done it. And what I did there was to copy that formula, rather than grabbing this fill handle and dragging it down, I double clicked on it. So whenever I have data adjacent to part of the spreadsheet here, like this formula, instead of grabbing the mouse and dragging it down, not a big deal here, it's only four rows, but still easy to overshoot. Bigger deal when you're copying it down dozens or hundreds or thousands of rows because then the mouse tends to accelerate and get away from us. Here, I can simply leverage that preceding column. I double click on the fill handle, that's that little notch. Excel copies the values down and there's my formula. So on every row here, just to show you what the formulas look like, there are my values there. We come along and we use our sum function and gives us, we see that we have the same totals there. Now, let's say that Gregory decides to switch to the IT department. In this case, those two formulas updated themselves there. Whereas up here, these two formulas are stuck in time. They're returning bad values there. Converse, com comparing that to some if, which kept up and automatically reflected the change there. If we were looking for, let's say, a new department here, let's say that we looked for, let's just say we abbreviated HR there and we copy this down. Well, HR is not on the list there and so some if returns a zero. So instead of returning a pound and A to signify it didn't find anything, some if returns a nice tidy zero. If we updated our list here to show HR, then it would show the HR totals, and then the human resources would be zeroed out because we don't have the words human resources in that column anymore. So between VLOOKUP and some if, you can write formulas that are resilient, that go and find the data, rather than you having to go point to the data over and over again.